What's up gangsters? How about part five of this oil paint rendering for aircraft series? I think I said at the end of the last one that this was going to be part six, but that, yeah, that obviously was not true. If you uh, heard that and were confused, you were not in a time warp. I just misspoke. Anyway, um, the scope of this one is going to be a bit more limited because um, I'm saying this after I've already done the actual work. Um, I am not in a time warp. Anyway, um, all I'm going to do on this one is uh, basically the paint fade uh, on pretty much the entire top of the airframe. It's the last move uh, for the top of the airframe, and it's, you know, it's quite a bit. Uh, but I think this will be uh, something that will be useful because, you know, anytime you want to fade paint, it doesn't really matter if it's an aircraft or tank or truck or whatever. But before I get into that, I want to answer a good question that I got uh, in the comments um, and that was, do you clean your big magic blender brush in mineral spirits? And what he was referring to is this thing right here. And it's a good question because, yeah, you totally can. There's nothing wrong with dunking this thing in mineral spirits. But with all of these bristles, it soaks up a lot and it takes forever to dry. Like, it, it might not even be dry the next day. And it needs to be dry when you use it. Um, so what I do when it starts to collect a little bit too much material on the on the fringes of it, is I'll put some mineral spirits on a paper towel, and then I'll just whisk the brush, or kind of you know fold it up into a stiff wad, right where the mineral spirits is, and then I'll just kind of whisk the brush back and forth across the paper towel, and that'll totally clean the bristles off um, without getting them all soaked with mineral spirits. So. Anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's that. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. Back at it again. And as per usual, I have uh, snuck in a few things while you guys weren't looking. But I haven't really done any new techniques. I've just done additional things. Um, I wanted some oil splatters uh, right here around the uh, little hatch there for the for the oil tank and I did that you know in the same way that I've done the other splatters hopefully that'll show up okay um, then I actually sort of did introduce a new a new technique not 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 anything super surprising, but um, I love me some sponging. So, getting that thing on there, and then just going back to my palette, still had uh, material that was a little bit uh, soft from yesterday. Uh, the, you know, these things just don't last as long when they're sitting on a piece of cardboard or paper as they do if they're sitting on something that's not absorbent. So if you want your oils to stay soft for a longer period of time, you know, put them on a little plastic lid uh, or on a, you know, like I use these little aluminum foil weighing boats. Those are, those are nice for that. But either way, look, you can get some mineral spirits in the sponge and um, get into your little pile of paint and you can pretty quickly see that you're able to create, you know, splotches of varying density. And it's all about how much mineral spirits you've got in there. Um, you know, you get some, some nice, thick, soft paint on there, and you can immediately make those darker. Um, it, you know, again, it's infinite control, and that's, that's part of the fun thing about oils, as I keep saying. But... What I did was get most of those mineral spirits off so that I was making small speckles like that as I stippled it on and got my paint relatively thick. See there how that makes a relatively dark pattern? Because this is what I was after, was doing some, you know, irregular sort of things like that, all right? And where I did those was um, all along uh, these same 
work areas and around on these these uh, gun doors. So you can kind of see, hopefully, where I've got some of that happening around there. Uh, and just, again, to kind of reflect what I, I showed you guys uh, in, that, uh, in that photo of the dudes, you know, working on that. You have to be careful not to make repetitive patterns. If you're using, you know, even because even with the sponge, you know, you certainly can. So you have to just constantly be aware of that and be, you know, turning it and making sure that you're not repeating yourself. The other thing that this that is good to talk about at this point because I've got a lot of stuff going on here. I've got multiple types of effects, multiple layers of effects. And the thing that you have to be careful of is to not get so much going on that it starts to look muddy uh, and uncontrolled. That's, that's the worst thing. I, I generally don't subscribe to the idea that, that weathering is ever overdone or underdone. It's either well done or poorly done uh, in terms of the, of the storytelling. And, uh, but uh, what often starts to make weathering look overdone is when it gets muddy and you know the effects become poorly defined uh, i would encourage anybody who wants to get into this type of thing to look at the work of guys like mike rinaldi um, and study it closely uh, you know uncle night shift is another good example martin's really good at it adam wilder's really good at it and these are armor guys but they do most of this stuff and they do it really well and what I would encourage you to look at is, and try to do is see how many distinct effects you can, you can identify when you look at, at their work. Speckling, streaking, blending, stippling, you know, just every different type of effect. And see, and you'll notice that, that, that on these guys who are, uh, on the work of these guys who are just real masters at it, that you'll be able to distinctly see each thing and see the patterns. And, uh, and, and that's a key in making it look not only authentic, but visually pleasing. So, all right, that being said, next step is to, I wanna get into doing some paint fade. That's, the, that's really the last uh, move that I'm gonna do on the top side here. Um, you know, when I pull out here, you can hopefully see kind of the overall thing going on, kind of see the context. Um, and, and so what I, all I want to do now is start to bring in some paint fade along the fuselage spine, the tops of the tail plane, and the tops of the wings, and up here on, on top of the nose. Um, it's not going to be uh, super dramatic, but hopefully enough to definitely create the the effect, and you know, and tell that story. And uh, you know, I, you guys might get tired of hearing me talk about storytelling, but look, that's the deal. I believe that all good art is about storytelling, and I'm not claiming this is art or not art or whatever. That's a whole other <laughs> that's a whole other debate. But what I am saying is that that that. Uh, the creative process, uh, to me, when it's at its most effective, is when it communicates a story to the viewer that the creator doesn't have to be there to explain. Uh, so, and I don't view this as any different. Um, you know, what I'm trying to make happen here is um, that as your eye wanders around the thing, that you see these little sort of micro narratives. Um, and like in you know this particular case right here, you look at that and you see the stain and you see the speckles and you see the hatch and your brain immediately goes, oh, okay, there's, there's you know, that, that's a little door that you open up and you pour stuff in there and dudes are sloppy and they spill stuff and there's these, you know, little speckles from that. Same thing, you know, with chipping. This is a small story of guys walking around here and knocking the paint off. Um, the few, you know, the, the, the fuel sort of dribble that I've got going on here. 
all of these are, are to me the things that make a model really come to life. It's sort of archeological in a sense, if that doesn't sound too pretentious, but it's basically uh, the process of, of making the thing have a life story that you can identify, you know, even without seeing any of the people do their thing, because unless it's in a, a diorama or a vignette, you're, you're not going to have, you know, those pointers, if you will, uh, to, to help you tell that story. So you're entirely dependent on just what's on the surface of the model to give the viewer clues as to what's been happening. And again, to really take it out of the realm of just being, you know, a sort of a, of a, of a toy to being a representation of, of, a, of a real life artifact. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to this paint fading business. So what I wanna do here is, uh, the first thing I need is to mix up some paint. Um, what I'm gonna be trying to do is first duplicate the color that's already on there. Uh, so that way, I have an idea, I have a, I have a baseline, if you will. All right, so I've got some colors out here on my palette. I've got some, uh, some zinc white, I've got some yellow ochre, I've got some raw sienna, I have some Windsor & Newton olive green, and then I've got some Abtelung 502, what is that one called? That one is uh, this, uh, industrial earth. It's really more of a brown. Really actually looks 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 like a dark olive green on the tube, but it really is more brown. I don't know that I'm going to use any of that, but uh, anyway, I've also got some masking fluid here. And the reason being is because um, with this uh, with this round Elbian right here, I need to I need to cover that up because I'm gonna be working with greens right here in this area and you cannot get anywhere near white in particular with other colors of, of oils. Um, anything that's not a shade of gray because it will contaminate it no matter how good you're able to clean it off even on a glossy surface you will contaminate those whites and it will make you very sad so it's important to protect that so i'm just gonna just do a sort of quick and easy bit of masking here just to make sure I'm not in the danger zone. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so that takes care of that. All right, now, as I was starting to say before uh, I, I got all these oils out, um, there's, I, I wanna try and, and first duplicate the base color uh, because that gives me a baseline to start from. But that's not the only way to do paint paint fading or or darkening because what I'm what I'm about to do here works for creating any kind of tonal variety you know up or down in the in the in the luminosity scale doesn't necessarily have to be for fading um, you could say well why don't I just put some white on there and fade it that way well let's see what happens because that's a very simple thing to do, uh, and it works well in certain cases. Uh, what I find is that it works well with uh, blues. Uh, obviously, blacks works pretty good. Uh, greens, I, I tend to find not so much. But let's just, you know, let's just see. Let's just see how it goes. So I've got this. This is a great brush for this, this Royal and Lang Nickel. Number two combo, as I was saying, it, you know, in in part one, this is kind of a kind of a filbert thing. And anyway, I'm just going to put some paint uh, straight. You know, this is basically straight out of the tube. I have not 
given these things uh, any time to to uh, to settle down, uh, you know, leach themselves out. So let's just put a little bit of white there, and let's uh, you know I'm going to scrub it in. You can see it's going on pretty dense. All right, so let me get a blending brush. We'll do a little dry blending with that. And you can see I'm, you know, I'm scrubbing most of it off. Okay, and it's not bad, but it it looks it looks kind of white, right? It, I, you know, it, I mean, it's. I guess this is just purely a, a an artistic judgment. I, I don't personally love that. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It it, it just looks a little flat and muted, um, and that's not really what I'm after. So get as much of that off of there dry as necessary. And then I'm going to just go ahead and put a little mineral spirits on that Q-tip. And we'll just wash that off. No big deal. If there's a little bit left over, no harm, no foul. All right, so that concludes that experiment. All right. So what I tend to do more with greens and browns when I want to lighten them is I go to a yellowish tone, which, in the, in it, which typically ends up being yellow ochre. This is basically a lot like the MRP sand gelb that I use um, when I'm messing around with, with greens uh, to spray. And that's how I got a lot of the tonal variety that I've already built in here is by mixing that MRP 79 sand gelb uh, with the greens that I was using. But you can also use it directly. Um, and so we'll see how that works. Get rid of that little spot there. Okay, so that's that's good. All right, oils are so powerful; it really doesn't take much for them to create a, an effect, and that can be, you know, that that can end up looking like contamination if you're not, you know, if if it's not the right tone. All right, so I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to get a little bit of this yellow ochre on my brush. All right, and. Let's just put some of that on there. Same spot. Okay. Work it around a little bit. And then do a little blending. And let's see how that looks. Okay. So there that, that is. That's also not terrible, but it's not great either because it get, you know, it just looks kind of like a yellow spot there, right? You can very clearly see that. So this is why uh, I say that like with these greens, there's there's not it's just not as simple a solution as just picking up one tube of oils and adding some to the surface and blending it in. This, uh, and that's why I'm going to show you how I'm going to come up with something that's an approximation of the base color that will then adjust to the lighter end of the scale uh, to create the fading. Okay, hopefully I can pull this off on camera because this is very much a matter of, of kind of operating by eye and by intuition. Okay, so I've got this olive green right here, and you can see when I pull that out that it's not not a not a bad olive green, but it's definitely darker than what I want. So just like I was saying, when I want to lighten the green, 
What I really want to use is something that's got some yellow in it to maintain the brightness and not make it look just faded out. You know, if you if 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 all you're trying to do is lighten the dark green and you want it to remain vibrant, you've got to put some yellow in there. All right. Now, this is still more yellow than I want, so I'm going to just stir stir in some some more of the green. We'll see where we get to with that. All right. So, that's too dark, obviously. I don't want that. So back over here into the yellow pile. And just kind of looking out of my side eye at, at what I've got going on over there. Okay, you can see. I'm, I'm closing in on it. Let's see where we're at. It's not real easy to do. Yeah, anyway, okay, so that kind of shows you. It's still too dark though, so come back in there with some more of that. Now, here's where I may want to introduce some white. Because again, I need to bring the value up, and white will definitely do that. I just don't want to lose the... I don't want to lose the vibrance. So, just continuing to work with that. Get a little bit more white over here. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, now I have a light olive drab. Okay, it's pretty close. I feel like on camera, it looks a lot lighter and a lot less green than it really should. But I think I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm just trying to get close. Let's, let's see what it does. Okay, so working back in our same spot here. I've got some of that material on my brush, okay? And you can immediately see it is, in fact, quite a bit lighter. That's not too, not, it's not bad, though. It's in the direction that I want it to be in, at least. I mean, I'm gonna want it to be lighter. Anyway, so that's all right. So let's blend some of that in and see what we think. Still pretty yellow. I think actually I was getting into the yellow ochre that was already on my brush and maybe I need to uh, just get a different brush. Okay, so I got a clean brush. I cleaned that spot off. This is the pure green that we, that we were working with. All right, so when I sort of scrub that in, it definitely goes Lighter, still a little bit yellow, but it's not terrible. You can see though that when I blend that in, it's practically invisible. All right, so I'm, I'm pretty close. Um, it's all about what it looks like when you blend it as opposed to what it looks like when it's just sitting there on the palette like that. Because they look relatively similar. Um, but I think maybe what I need is still a little bit more white. Okay, so I'm kind of messing around with this here. It's not, still not terrible, but I'm still just not totally satisfied with that tone. I like it when it's on this sheet of paper a lot better than I like it when it's over here on the actual spot. So I'm still not really sure that's going to work for me. Let me blend that and see what I think. Okay, so I've blended that in, and I'm not 100% I'm not convinced, but I'm also uh, not 
I mean, I'm, I'm like 80% there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the next part of this move. And this is kind of the magic, all right? You can see that it's possible to create uh, splotches just with how you apply the raw oil. And that's fine if you like to do it that way. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But here's, here's what I do next. All right, so got another little piece of sponge here. I'm going to get that into the mineral spirits. And I'm going to get rid of most of the mineral spirits. As I keep saying, how much you have in the sponge is going to, def you know, that's, that's going to dictate how this next step works. All right. Now that I've got some mineral spirits on here, I'm going to just start doing this stippling action. And you can see that the sponge makes it, you know, the mineral spirits causes it to collect and coalesce in this random way that is very natural to oxidized paint. And that's what we want. And you can just keep working it as much as you know, as much as suits you. Now you'll notice I'm staying off of the dark green patches because I'm not really sure that what I'm doing is gonna work for that, but let's go over there and let's just do some stippling on that and see what happens. We'll see, I'm gonna work this and then let it, let it flash off and then uh, we'll come back and see what we think. If we don't like it, I'll wash it off and start over. But what I definitely want to do is kind of show how it fades in around the edges of this work area pattern, like I was saying before. So there we go. All right, let that sit and we'll come back and see what it looks like a little later. Okay, well I just recorded a whole little segment there with the record button turned off. <laughs> but it's already a couple of minutes later, so here, take a look at this. Hopefully you guys can see the uh, pattern that developed here. Uh, I really think this looks dope. You can see that sort of micro texture that's going on and that the color tone looks just enough faded out to tell your eye what's going on there. I think that's gonna work, and I'm gonna go with that, and I'm gonna actually carry on and do some more. Um, I had, had a little blooper. I apparently have got some yellow ochre somewhere on my hands because I keep getting it on this windscreen. You can see that right there. Oils are like that. They will migrate and just, it can be frustrating until you figure out where it's coming from. Um, but, this is, this is, you know, part of why oils are so great, because a little bit of mineral spirits, at least as long as you catch it quickly and you wash right off, no big deal. And I hope that what's coming through in this video segment is, is just more of what I keep saying, that there's really nothing to be afraid of with oils. They're super forgiving. They've got this tremendous range. You can do so much cool shit with them, but you just really almost cannot fuck it up. All right, I feel like this is pretty solid. Uh, but I want to show you guys one quick little thing. If you'll notice uh, right here, okay, I've left this. Um, you can see kind of as you move along the wing there that I've got a little bit more of that paint concentrated in this area. Uh, and the effect is really stronger than I want it to be. And I just did this a few minutes ago. The mineral spirits has already flashed off. This is where the big magic blender is fantastic because I can take that and just very quickly tune that, tone it down to exactly the level that I want. And I've got that, nope, oh, hello compressor.
All right, so I got that masking off of there, and you can see right there where I went a little bit outside the lines that I've got a little bit of a hard edge. And obviously I don't want that, so I'm just gonna come in with my blender and work that, but not go towards the white. Because even that slight amount of paint is enough to contaminate that white. I don't want that. That's just a measure of how powerful oils are. Okay, dudes, I have a confession. Uh, yeah, I cheated uh, a little bit, a lot, um, <laughs> because I have now spent several hours working on this, uh, not on camera. And I apologize for that, but this is probably the largest single move that I'll make on this whole model. And I, I don't say that to sound like grandiose. What I mean is, is that it is physically the largest move because it covered, you know, so much of the airframe, you know, the wings, the top of the fuselage, tailplane, but also big in the sense that that one thing that I just did has the greatest potential to shift the look of the entire thing. And you can see that it certainly has, and that's what I wanted, but I just really had to crank up some Motley Crue and just focus uh, and, and, and just work it. So uh, I didn't do anything different from what I was doing. I just kept doing more of it and just fine tuning it. Um, and uh, you can see, you know, that what I was trying to do was um, bring in the, the fade on everything except the work areas like I talked about, then uh, come back and fade the these uh, ailerons, uh, the control surfaces that are covered with canvas because I wanted them to be a different tone. And so all I did there was I mixed some more of the green, uh, but with way more white. So you can kind of see the difference in what I was working with there. Um, and that gave me uh, just a slightly different look for just to depict the paint oxidizing in a slightly different way on uh, on those surfaces. So um, I think this is this is pretty much it. Um, oh, okay. I did do one thing slightly different. Um, right here on the tail plane, where I wanted to create a different tone on these canvas surfaces. I used the same paint that I did uh, on the ailerons, but I basically just brushed it on like a filter where it was just almost entirely thinner. And the only reason that I did that was because I just wanted to make sure it color inside the lines and didn't want to have to, you know, deal with a bunch of cleanup. Uh, and you know, it's, you can see that it pretty much works the same. I also did not do the stippling treatment with the sponge on these areas because I just wanted to have a slightly different texture. So all that being said, I think I am about done with the top of the uh, airframe. I am uh, gonna set this aside and I feel like tomorrow that I am probably gonna come in here and uh, right off the bat, I'm going to throw some uh, GX113 on all of this work to just really lock that in i feel i feel pretty good about it and i feel like i'm ready to move on um but before before i, I do that i'm gonna do the uh prop spinner and i'll show you we'll do that on camera here directly okay so here we go now i have never done anything with red before so this is a little bit of an adventure um, this is a pretty deep dark red and what I want to do is just make everything in front of that groove uh, uh, just a lighter, more faded color. And this is a relatively cool red. It's got quite a bit of blue in it. Um, and what I want is to have a kind of an orange tone. And I feel like um, this is some cadmium red that I put out there. And I'm not sure that's really going to get me where I want to be. But uh, I'm going to give it a try. So 
Let me get a scrubby, mixy kind of brush here. And we'll see if we can come up with a tone that will work. So I'm just going to put that right there. Um, I think some of this um, raw sienna is probably going to be a good idea. That'll kind of pull that to the orange. Well, that's kind of a dark, kind of a dark orange right there. It's kind of what I'm after. Um, but let's just see what happens. All right. Let's. I mean, I'm going to load this thing up with a bunch of thinner, and I'm going to do this the same way that I did the uh, uh, ailerons, or the, sorry, the elevators, because I I just want to control that a lot. So, all right, let's just see what happens here. Let me get the camera down here where we can all see better. Okay. All right. Okay, so that is, looks really orange next to that red and Looks pretty bold. Let me uh, blow on that and see what happens when it starts to flash off. You have to keep in mind, everything always looks crazy at first. So you just have to be, you know, don't ever panic. Because again, let me take it right back off there. All right, so I kind of like what's happening here, but I want to make sure that I don't go across that edge right there. And so I've got just a whiff of mineral spirits on this brush, and that takes care of that. And these streaks uh, are not protected with any clear coat at the moment. Um, you know, I did those, gosh, it's closing on a week now, so they should be pretty impervious at this point to mineral spirits. All right, so I like that. Uh, I think that is pretty cool, but it's, but it's maybe a little more dramatic than I want. Well, that's okay because I'll just take this thing and hopefully this shows on camera. This is, it's so subtle, but it's just kind of taking that back just a little bit. And now I think I'm pretty happy with it. It just cuts down on that, on that local contrast just a little bit. So hopefully now you can kind of see what's going on there. I think that's pretty sweet. I think that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so back at it again. It's the next day, and I have, as predicted, shot some uh, GX113. Uh, I, I'm not exclusively using that. Um, I've also been using this quite a bit because it's really handy. This is pretty, pretty ready out of the bottle for just most things, but for what I did here, I reduced it a whole bunch, and I'll explain why here in just a second. But um, this is the result. So I've assembled the prop um, and you can see now what the final result there looks like. Hopefully the tonal variety that I've got there is, is going to show up on camera. It, it, it does not always. 
The camera does not always do as good a job as, uh, you know, uh, photographing it. Cell phone cameras don't do well. They have a limited dynamic range as compared to the digital sensor and a DSLR and these little cheapo video cameras like I'm using. Also not great for capturing really subtle uh, tonal variation, especially in reds. That's That seems to be problematic, but hopefully if I'll stop moving it around, you'll be able to see that there. So I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty stoked with that. Uh, I also uh, shot uh, GX113 on the airframe, decided I was happy and ready to commit. And I am very pleased. Like this, literally on the wings. I sprayed the fuselage uh, last night, but I sprayed the wings just now. So like this is just literally as minutes old. Um, and I am I'm I'm really stoked. I, I love the way it looks. And I want to show you guys something in particular. And this is going to make you guys who have to use acrylics really jealous because the reason that I thin that clear matte lacquer so much is because all I'm really trying to do is basically melt these oils into the surface of the lacquer that's already there. Just just basically fry it, burn it right in there and, and leave as little material behind as possible once the lacquer thinner flashes off. So I'm mixing it like 70% reducer. And the effect is really cool because you can see what I mean by burning it in. I don't know if you can, uh, you know, go back to reference what this area right here looked like um, out here on this wing tip when I did it. Uh, and again, I hope the camera will show this. I'm gonna get the light down here and get the camera pointed in the right direction. And hopefully you'll be able to see this. It's kind of hard for me to tell until I get this on, uh, on my Mac to edit it. But look at the amount of contrast that I have right there. That's more contrast than was showing after I did the sponge stippling technique. Because what happens is that lacquer comes in there so hot and, and everywhere that oil is, is in a really thin layer, it just basically just burns right through it. Whatever's, you know, it, it leaves a, a trace of itself behind. And so what happens is you end up getting more local contrast after the flat coat goes on than you had to begin with. And I, it really makes it just, for me, it just makes it come alive. Like you can see there on the back of the nose, kind of what's going on there. Again, hopefully this will, will show on camera. Um, this spot right here where I showed you guys how I reduced that, the, the amount of, of the paint with the big magic blender. You can see the level of contrast going on there. Um, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> and this is hilarious. I swear, I don't know where this shit is coming from. I literally, I literally just now got some <laughs> yellow oak. Not that's not that's not yellow ochre. That's raw sienna. I don't know where the fuck that is coming from. I swear. That was not there two seconds ago. And I just bumped the camera arm into the, the thing. And so now I've raised the camera up so I can look underneath because I'm thinking maybe it's on the freaking camera arm. I, I don't know. That's just ridiculous and crazy. But anyway, uh, let me stop babbling. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I, hopefully, this, like I said, this episode will be valuable. Um, I think uh, this is maybe one of my favorite ones because this is the point where I kind of look at the whole surface of the aircraft and go, okay, this is what I want. So I'm uh, pretty stoked right now, and uh, hopefully you guys have found this useful. As always, I appreciate you watching. Much love.